It's the magic of math here, and today we're going to be given a real world situation and four different graphs, and we're going to identify the graph that represents the real world situation. And let's begin with our question. We're told that pens cost $1.50 each at a school store. We're asked which graph represents Y, the cost in dollars, of purchasing X pens at the store. Here's where I would like you to pause the video, do your best work, and then come back to see mine. Good luck. Welcome back. So once again, we're going to identify the graph from these four graphs that represents Y, our total cost spent in dollars, and here's our Y axis, and each graph is labeled to represent Y, the cost in dollars, so the total amount we spend at the school store. We're also told that X represents how many pens we purchased at the store. So here's our X axis, and we can see that each of the graphs is labeled number of pens purchased. So when we look at the graph, we could know the number of pens we purchased to go up to the line, and that needs to represent our cost in dollars. We are also told that the pens cost $1.50 each. This is our unit rate, or our slope of our line, how much we pay per pen. Now let's also understand in this real world situation that if we buy zero pens, we're going to pay zero dollars. So zero, zero needs to be a point on the line. So each one of these lines needs to begin at the origin or it cannot be one of the lines that represents the situation. So let's look at that first. So I look at the origin zero, zero. I purchase zero pens. I spend zero dollars. That is a point. This line begins at the origin. So it could be graph A. Let's look at graph B. Plot the point zero, zero. The line does start at the origin. Zero pens purchased, zero dollars spent. So it could be graph B. Graph C, if we plot the origin, we can see that this point is not on the line. This tells us that if I spend, if I buy zero pens, it's going to cost me over a dollar. So we know we can eliminate C because no store is going to charge us if we don't buy anything. Let's look at graph D. Plotting the point zero, zero on graph D, we can see that that also is not on the line. This graph tells me that if I buy zero pens, again, it costs me over a dollar. So we're going to eliminate graph D. So now we have two graphs to pick from. One strategy would be to write the equation of this real world situation. So we're going to start with our cost Y is going to be equal to our dollar fifty that we pay multiplied by the number of pens I purchase. And we know that our Y intercept here is zero. So we're going to consider this as our line. So let's just look at purchasing one pen because that's the easiest amount of pens to buy, right? One pen is X is one, a dollar fifty times one. So one pen would cost a dollar fifty. So let's look at our graphs. If I go to one pen on graph A and go up to my line, that's going to be less than a dollar. Let's look at graph B. If I go up from one pen up to my line, that's going to be approximately a dollar fifty. That's what it looks like on the graph. So I can eliminate graph A because this is less than a dollar to buy one pen. And then I can look and identify that our best graph here is one pen cost approximately a dollar fifty. That's what it looks like to me on the line. And we can say that graph B out of these four graphs represents this real world situation. Thanks for joining me to talk about the graph of a real world situation and identify different traits on the graph to pick the correct real world graph. And that's the magic of math where we master math one video at a time. Thanks for joining me today, and I hope you come back soon.